Well, with last week's episode being a bit unrealistic, this episode things were back into form with what might be one of the most realistic school episodes yet. Hey guys, coming in for Girl Meets World Season 3, Episode 4, Girl Meets Permanent Record, and I was really looking forward to this episode. Like I said, I really enjoyed last week's episode, but it was a bit unrealistic, I'm not gonna lie, it was a bit too abrupt of an ending, but this episode was not the case at all, this episode was fantastic, I really loved it, really relatable as well, and I like the way this episode dealt with the subject it was telling, because... Basically, this episode, you know, it's not necessarily about failure, it's about how failure leads to success and things like that, but let's just get into this episode because I really loved it overall. Basically, we start off in Spanish class, and the way this was done, I really love, because Riley and Maya, they're in this class, which is basically Spanish only, and uh, let me just tell you guys straight out that I'm not good at Spanish, honestly, so this episode is really relatable to me. I'm definitely more Riley than I am Maya. They're just things that I don't really understand in Spanish, and I just don't really do well. Um... You know, last year I did, but this year I just didn't really put forth the effort and things like that. But basically, but enough about me, let's get to the episode. Maya's doing really well, you know, she, for whatever reason, just doing really well in Spanish. While Riley, on the other hand, seems to not be doing so well. You know, she seems to not really know exactly what she's learning. She doesn't even seem to be doing Spanish right, and she doesn't really understand, um, you know, the words and everything. Maya, long story short, Maya ends up getting an A, Riley ends up getting a D, and she's freaking out. She's never gotten a D before, she's always done really well in school. And she doesn't know where this D has come from. And I like the way they handled this subject. Because it wasn't Riley being jealous of Maya. That's not what this is about. This was not Riley's jealousy of Maya. It's just that Maya clearly is better at this than Riley. And they kind of show him why. It's not, you know, completely far off. It's basically because... From where Maya lives, she has a lot of Spanish-speaking people in her community, and it just comes more natural to her, while Riley, it just doesn't, because, remember, Maya lives in, like, this, you know, huge apartment building, while Riley lives, you know, in her own house with her family and everything, and Maya's probably used to having, you know, speaking Spanish. She probably has been speaking Spanish all her life. We pretty much get that sense here, and I like that we saw that. Um, I did love the way that Corey and Topanga handled this, though, because... You know, they've always treated Maya like one of their own. They always have. I mean, that's nothing new. I know I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, that was dumb that they did that, but they've always treated Maya as one of their own. You know, Sepanga is so happy for Maya. She even hangs up her paper on the refrigerator, but I think it's really showing that they're really proud of her. I mean, look back in Season 1, Episode 4, where Maya really wasn't putting forth the effort at all. This really just shows how far Maya has come, and I think this was a great character growth episode for Maya. Out of really everyone, I mean, Riley too, but... You know, Riley's always been an overachiever. Maya, on the other hand, never really has had that confidence, and here she really has done a great job. But Topanga and Corey do inform Riley that, you know, failure to get better, this will end up on her permanent record. And this obviously does scare her. She wants to do better. She doesn't know why she's not doing well all of a sudden, and she wants to do really well, and I definitely did like seeing that. I love Maya realizing that the only grades that matter are high schools, which aren't necessarily true. I mean, really, you know... Middle school determines where you end up in high school. High school ends up where you determine in college, and then college determines where you end up in life. That's really how I see it, at least. I mean, I'm go. I'm. I mean, I'm. I'm thinking about that right now. You know, I'm going to college um, next year, my senior year. So it's pretty crazy. Um, so I'm really thinking about that kind of stuff. I mean, yeah, they're freshmen, but yeah, it's true. You really should try to do well all three years in high school, and I think that definitely is is shown here. And I definitely really did like that. So Riley, obviously, you know, she's kind of worried that she's not going to do well. She doesn't really know how this is going to go. But then we get a very realistic scene with Corey that I absolutely love. Basically, Corey goes to meet the Spanish teacher, who is probably one of my favorite teachers we've met on the show yet, because this Spanish teacher is hard, but she's very fair, and you understand why she is the way she is. She likes to challenge her students, and that's what a good teacher does. A good teacher does challenge their students. A good teacher understands, you know, the difficulties that their students have, and they try to meet that, you know, they, they try to help their students with, those, with said struggles, and... It's only hard, you know, it's only better if a student, you know, finds something harder than they find something easier. Because they find something harder, they'll work it in everything. And I like the way that Corey, you know, isn't just saying, you know, don't try to take it easy on my daughter. Don't try to take it easy on her. I understand where you're going through. You know, he obviously tries to change things a little bit, but, um... 
I really do like the way that he says, you know, that they're both new and that they both really care about their students. And that's the thing. He cares about each and every one of his students. He really wants them all to do well. And basically, that's the thing. It's not just Riley he cares about. He cares about every single one of them. The problem is that they don't all have that same motivation. You know, some of them are probably losing some of that motivation. Some of them might not have that motivation yet. There's this great scene after what I love where he goes to Riley and says, how many of these students do you know? She says, none of them. And he says, well, you will. And it's kind of like, like grades, how you're not used to this setting, because yeah, it is a weird transition from high school, middle school, it's suddenly harder, things, you know, there's more work, things like that, it's just a very weird transition, and I like the way he says that you're going to get better at it, you're going to do well, as long as you, as long as you try, you're going to do well, and I thought it was just a really nice scene, love the way that was done. But then we get the scene where we see that Riley's not the only one struggling, we see Lucas and Zay, um, are going to try out for the baseball team, which Smackle was back in this episode. It just felt weird that Smackle wasn't there last week. I mean, Smackle was there so much in this episode that I don't know why the hell she wasn't there last week. I don't know if the actress couldn't be there, but it just seems like she's now part of this group and she needs to be there. So I don't know why Smackle wasn't there last week. It just feels more natural when Smackle is there. And it's awesome to see her back because two great things about Smackle. One, her snark is still there, which is something I absolutely love about this episode is that snarky side of Smackle, the way that she's not afraid to tell how she feels and she really doesn't hold back. I love that. To her random crush on Lucas that was in the Girl Meets New Year episode has somehow resurfaced, and I think that's really funny overall. Not a lot with that, but there's a little bit of that, which I definitely really do like. Basically, we find out that Lucas and Zay have tried out, have both tried out for the baseball team. Lucas is not as good as Zay. Zay is really good. Zay is a lot better, and he's kind of with Maya. I like the friendship that these two created. I thought that was really interesting. And then Farkle is no longer as smart as Smackle. Smackle is smart smarter than him, but they both need to realize that it's not that they're, you know, less smart, it's just that they are better in those areas than they are, and I think that's something that they do realize the episode goes on. Obviously, they're trying to figure out really where they went wrong, because they're used to doing really well, and they're not doing well all of a sudden. You know, Farkle, you know, Lucas feels like he no longer belongs in baseball, that kind of thing, because, you know, football didn't work, and now baseball's not working either, which I will say it's a bit weird that this high school has football and baseball, but, you know, it's whatever. I'm not really going to complain about that, because it's not really that big of a deal, but, you know, Lucas doesn't feel like he's as good in baseball. He wants to do better, and you definitely see them want to put forth that effort to do better, and that's something I definitely really did love, and I think was very well shown here, and it shows that not just Riley is struggling, really everyone is struggling, and everyone does struggle in some sort of area. There's always going to be a class in high school, or any school, no matter where you are, going to struggle, and it's true. I mean, for me, I'd say middle school was math, and then high school, it's Spanish. That's how it is for me. Those have been the two classes that I've struggled in the most, and, you know, there's always going to be more people that struggle, and, you know, there are always going to be people that are better at English than they are at math. There are always going to be people that are better at math than they are in English, and I think this episode just shows that really well, and I think there was something really well done this episode. So Riley really is trying to study hard for Spanish. You know, she's cramming in. She's doing these late-night study sessions, which aren't bad, but you shouldn't study all night because it just is really overwhelming, and it's just not a good idea to do that, uh, but they can see she's working really hard at it, and I like the way that they went up to Augie because they asked him how hard second grade is, and just little small things, transitions, like you know, them not having cookies, and them having carrots instead of cookies, and them giving them a lot more work, and it's not as fun. And yeah, that's a weird transition as well, because first grade is first grade. It's like, you know, this is awesome experience, and then second grade is so much more work-oriented, and Augie doesn't really understand it, and I thought that that was really great. Even though Augie is, you know, as young as he is, I think it was a good idea to go to Augie and show that even he's struggling, and even he is going through the same thing as Riley. She's definitely not alone, and then we get this great scene with Topanga where she goes to this man's teacher, and she says, look, I get it. I get it that you want to challenge your students. I get it that you, you know, aren't going, I'm not going to be able to let you go easy on Riley, because she wants to challenge her, and that's what a good teacher does, and I really like the way that scene was done, the way she says how, you know, she wants, Riley, it is going to get easier for Riley, Riley needs to put forth that effort, and it's very much what's going on with Corey, that they are the new ones, and that's something I think they're doing really well, is that while Corey's really good at what he does, he's still a new teacher here, and he's still trying to figure things, the way things out, work out at the school, it's much different than it did in middle school, and that's something I thought was really well done, the way that Corey's kind of a rookie, just like Riley is, I thought was really cool, I definitely really thought that was one of the best parts here, and... 
the teacher just being very fair and saying, look, you know, I am going to challenge my students, but I care about each and every one of them and I want them to do well. That's what a good teacher does. You know, they challenge their students because they challenge them in areas that they're not as good at for them to eventually get better. In. And I think that's something they showed very well here. So Riley basically ends up doing really well. She ends up basically, you know, really studying hard and her and Farkle have this great conversation where they talk about why are they no longer as good as what they are and how they're going to try to, even though they're not as good, they're they're going to try to get better at it. They're going to try to do well. And that's something I thought was very well done. And I really loved it. And basically, at the end of this episode, um, we see... Riley does do well. She seems like she is starting to learn Spanish more. And the episode doesn't imply she's going to get, you know, like an A or anything, but it does say that she is getting it better. She is going to get work. She is going to, you know, work hard at what she needs to work hard at. And I thought it was a very good ending. Really like the way that it was done overall. And I thought it was just a really great way to end the episode. Um... And yeah, that was basically the episode I really enjoyed overall. I thought there was some really good stuff here, just the way the episode was done. I thought it was definitely one of the best of this season so far. I mean, even though there's only been four episodes, it's really been great. And uh, let's get more into this episode. So overall, guys, really great episode. This was definitely more of what I wanted in this season because this episode was really mature. It really did show that transition from middle school to high school is not easy and that a lot of times you're going to struggle. And I think the real message of this episode is not just get better in school. It's that turn that failure and make it into a success. And that's something that Riley does do throughout this episode. She takes what's a challenge for her and makes it into something easy and makes it into something positive. And that's something that Riley does really well, especially shown in that scene where they're all kind of distraught over not doing as well. And Riley is this optimism. That's something that Riley's always going to have. And that's something that's really good about Riley. Is that she does have optimism. She wants everyone to do well. She wants herself to do well as well. She's not just going to let one grade get her down. And I'm going to say to you guys that this episode kind of did help me with that. Because I really struggled in my Spanish class this year. I didn't put forth the effort I should have. I actually failed that class this year. Which is not a huge deal. Because I'm going to like a two-year school instead of versus a four-year school. You guys don't care about this. But, you know, basically I did not put forth the effort that I needed to meet to do well in that class, and Riley did. Riley did put forth that effort. Riley is going to work hard, and you really do get that sense at the end of this episode, and while the episode doesn't necessarily end in a triumph, it ends more in, you know, little by little, she's going to get better, and that really is realistic the way that's done, because it doesn't just end with her just getting an A. It ends with her, you know, no, starting to know more Spanish, starting to know more what she's doing. I loved her Chewbacca noise, by the way. The way that she thought that was Spanish, I thought was hilarious, because, yeah, it does kind of sound like a Spanish word, and I thought that was definitely very funny. Funny. I mean, some of the words, I will say, really, Riley, you didn't know, like, what Vamanos was, you didn't know what uh, Morbium was, I mean, there were some things that I was surprised Riley didn't know, but again, it's more of a challenge for her, and it's just she doesn't understand it as well as other people do, and I like seeing that Riley's not just an overachiever who's gonna do well at everything. You know, that's not a good character. A good character doesn't just succeed in everything. A good character does have failures along the way, and that's what Riley is having. She's having some failures along the way. Now, some people have gave the, this really stupid excuse that this could just be because of the love triangle, but no, I'm not, it's not that. It is definitely not that. Next week's episode is about the love triangle, though next week we are back into that, um, you know, it seems like pretty soon we're gonna end that, because Girl Meets Ski Lodge is episode 9, so it's not too far ahead, definitely we're gonna end it very soon, but next week's episode is the last episode before we go on a one-week hiatus, but then we're back the next week, which is awesome, I'm glad that they're not doing that lawn thing where they have a elongated hiatus that's really unnecessary, um, but I'm really loving the season overall, guys, so this was a really great episode. I like seeing Smackle, like I said, Smackle stuff. Her, um, you know, saying, even though Lucas wasn't doing well, her saying that she, Lucas is better than Farkle, I thought was really funny. And I like seeing Farkle and Smackle struggle. Even though these two are at odds, they still are together. And it's really sweet, actually. The way that Smackle wants to help Farkle, the way she wants him to be able to move past, as she called it, this endeavor, I really loved. I mean, Smackle is such a higher vocabulary than Farkle, you can definitely tell. And it's something he's not really used to. I mean, Farkle speaks normally, but Smackle just speaks so, like, intellectually. And she's really, you know, she's that girl that just is so smart. And you don't know how she's so smart. You don't know why she does so well. Uh, but that's something I think they showed really well here. I'm really loving uh, Smackle and Farkle. It's definitely one of the high points this season. But overall, guys, I mentioned you guys saw this episode. Absolutely love this episode. This was a really great one overall. Really, everyone had some great moments here. Rowan Blanchard obviously was great, but Sabrina Carpenter was so funny in this episode, especially the moments where she realized that she could have done well all along or that she didn't really need to do high school, that high school with the grades that matter. I thought that was really funny. Um... I also forgot to say, the other thing like with teachers, how she said that they're, we're not just preparing our students for freshman year, we have to prepare them for the next three years forward. And that really is true, because they need to understand that each year is going to get harder. And it really has. I mean, 
take it from me, freshman year was no nowhere near as hard as junior year was. They say junior year is the best and worst year of your life, and it really is. Junior year, you know, you're crammed with work. There are all these tests you need to take. There are all these things you start hearing about. You start hearing, oh, you're going to be a senior next year. I mean, it's kind of scary. But then, you know, freshman year is not, not nearly as bad. It's just a weird transition. Junior year is much different, and that's something that I like that she showed really well because, yeah, each year is going to get harder for Riley. Riley needs to understand that, and not every year is going to be walk in the park and that's something I think Riley learned very easily in this episode that not every year is going to be a walk in the park there are going to be some struggles along the way and that's something I really love but I hope you guys remember you guys saw this episode love to your thoughts on it we'll see you guys in my next video which will be for I think Outcast yes I am still reviewing that show and I will see you guys for that okay bye